Hey YouTube, uh, today we're making an Italian bread loaf. Uh, it's good for a lot of things. Um, we'll have the recipe in the comments below. Because uh, we're not going to be helping on this one. I just uh, messed up my intro, so we're re-recording this first snippet. And Jackie's on cameras, and she gets to make some special appearances as well. And while we wait that first hour to proof, um, we're going to make a little margarita too. So, hope you enjoy the video. Like, subscribe, and comment if you make it, like it, or have any suggestions. Thank you. First, we get our warm water. Nothing too fancy here. One. Two. Let's just turn the water all the way to hot, and then as soon as it starts to get warm, the two cups. Um, to that, we add the yeast, which Jackie has already pre-measured right into the KitchenAid. Pretty simple. Three minutes have passed. It's smelling really good. Um, the next one, uh, with the dough hook on it low, that's two. Just like that. We're going to add the sugar, salt, and flour. I'm also going to lift that up so it starts agitating everything. Um, the sugar, I have measured two teaspoons. Salt, one tablespoon of salt. And again, we use this fancy rusty salt, but you can use white salt, kosher salt. It doesn't matter because it's going to mix in there. Um, and then three cups of flour. Jackie told me this is for liquid measuring, so I'll use that next, but since I already poured it. Um, and it's not gradually, so as fast as you feel comfortable without making a mess. Don't get squashed by the dough hook. We're supposed to let this mix for six minutes. Um, we're going to scrape the sides so that everything mixes well. I like this little fancy silicone spatula, is that what you call it? You use whatever you want. And just play chicken with the hook, don't get stuck, don't get hurt. Um, you want to bring it in and show what this looks like in the early step. So extreme close up time. You see, you can get as close as you want. Look at that dough action. Yeah. And so again, we're just scraping the sides. Okay. Can you see the scraping? Mm -hmm. okay. So again, we're just scraping the sides. You see that? All right, so now we're gonna wait six minutes. All right. And it's been six minutes, so we're going to add that last two and a half cups of flour now, gradually. Um, do you want to zoom in and look at the, the texture, how this has changed? I mean, it almost looks like yogurt. Everything's incorporated, the yeast is in there. Um, and you can see, as we add, again, gradually, two and a half cups. Uh, half. One and a half, two and a half, boom. Give it some time, it's gonna do most of the work for you. We started this recipe without the KitchenAid and then I was like, wait a minute, this is a lot of work. Why do I have a dough hook on a KitchenAid if I'm sitting here working these guns? So it's a gun-free gun zone today. KitchenAid's doing all the heavy lifting and this thing's hardcore. You'll see it start to kind of like struggle but it never stops, it never gets stuck. Not on this recipe at least. So you can hear it, I'm sure you can hear on that video that it's getting a little more tough. This one, you don't need to really scrape the sides. This seems still a little wet, I might just scrape it off in here. But you're gonna see, it's gonna start picking up all the sides. Uh, this big, huge, sticky ball of deliciousness. Um, yeah, you wanna come in and see what's, what's going on here? It's pretty interesting. You see how it's just mushing and squishing. It's exactly what you'd be doing by hand right now. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get our money's worth out of this guy. I love this thing. Made pasta with it, made all sorts of stuff. Um, so it's gonna fight with that for a bit. It still looks very dry. Uh, 
we're, we're wanting this to look like a pizza dough ball. We've used different flours, even the same flours from different vendors. Uh, all the moisture content, I, I don't know if there's moisture in there or what. I don't know if our water is drier than other times. I don't know what's going on. But uh, I will put just a, just a splash of water in there. I'm usually half cup, but I'm not filling it up all the way. Just cause... All right, and it'll get kind of slippery in there. It's going to slide around in the bowl. It's going to keep poking and squishing. Eventually, it's going to turn that into a ball again. And we'll reassess. It's a lot easier to add water than it is to take the water away. Um, if you did get a little too swampy in there, add a little flour. But just know that there's other ratios in there that you're messing with. So <clears throat> we have a, a total of a Alexa set timer for six minutes. So six to eight minutes, it's already been playing for a bit. Uh, I want at least a solid five minutes of it in its happy spot. It's still mushing it around, it's not quite grabbing it, but it's getting better. You want to come in and see what this looks like? <clears throat> this is all stuff, a, a good reason for a video because it's, I mean, how do you describe that in a, you know, one of those online recipes? First you got to go through all their family life story and all their, the first person to ever have bread and scroll down and scroll down and watch two video ads. I love that new jump to recipe feature. I always look for that. <clears throat> but it's getting there and it's starting to knead it a little more. We wanted to incorporate that yeast so we get a nice even fluffy bread. Um, right now it's it's almost mixing it. It's kind of fun to watch this too, but I don't know. And just in that time it'll be running my mouth here. Come look at it. It looks it looks like a more like a pizza dough ball. And now it's actually folding it and incorporating itself. It's evening out that moisture by kneading it. Right? And that's what we want. Right there. Like a pizza dough ball. If you've ever seen Papa John's or anyone, that stretchy kind of Play-Doh texture is what we want. And that's what that looks like now. If you want to, you can always play with it a little bit. See? Play-Doh, right? Not too sticky on my hands. A little bit, maybe. But we'll let our KitchenAid keep playing with it. So, I'll meet you in a few minutes. Oh, perfect timing. Look at that. Alexa, stop. All right, we're teasing. So, this dough looks great. It barely slides off the hook. Now it's not sticking to my hands at all. Perfect. I mean, you really want Play Doh. Uh, next up, we're going to get a pretty big bowl, at least twice as big as your, um, your dough ball is going to be. Get whatever your favorite olive oil is. Give it a drizzle around. I'm gonna take this ball of dough off of here. Get off that you little hooker, hooker lover. So look at this thing. I just wanna bite into it. It smells good, it looks good. All right, get a bowl twice as big as your dough ball, drizzle oil around it. We did that, remove the dough from the KitchenAid and with your hands form it into a ball. Like in the cooking shows, but it's really not that hard. You just make it look nice. Um, toss in the oil bowl so that it's covered lightly in oil. Nothing really that hard there. That's it. I mean, you saw I did, oh, it smells so good. And a ball of oil. Um, that's how hard that step is. We're going to put it in a warm place with my very greasy hands. I don't know if you can see over here. Um, I'll talk loudly while I wash my hands. So a little trick we learned, uh, you know, you watch Cake Boss and the rest of that, they have proofing ovens, or even if you've been to Fuddruckers, you know, I think even Subway you might do something like that. Uh, so we put it on top of our toaster oven, set it to warm. This stuff's going to be 60 minutes. So we'll have our girl, Alexa, set timer for 60 minutes. One hour. Say one hour, starting now. She's perfectionist. So we're going to let that go for an hour. This is going to get big. Uh, cover it. Something. Uh, you don't need to use saran wrap or anything. I just use a, a loose towel just to, I don't know if that's just to keep stuff off of it. It's kind of sealed with that olive oil, but uh, we'll see you in one hour. All right. So I talked to Jackie. I was like, hey, we got an hour till the spread rises. Why don't we show everyone how to make our favorite spicy smoky margaritas? You got me there. I yeah. love spicy margaritas. Let's go this side since my camera's crooked and oh, oh, still can't see me. Oh, well. so 
super important. And we've gone to many happy hours. Many. All over the world, happy. different countries. And yeah, different countries, okay. different states. Yeah, Canada, Mexico, mm -hmm. that's different countries. Yep. No. Seattle. Yep. Vegas. Mm -hmm. All over the place. Florida. So whenever we find, yeah, Florida. So whenever we find a great cocktail, mm -hmm. we'll take a picture on the menu and then hopefully if we don't feel too bad the next morning, we say, oh, look at this cool little, you know, recipe. Or try to recreate it and make it our own. Well, and then we talk to the bartenders and see mm -hmm. their tricks. Yeah. Um, one of the number one tricks is to use fresh produce every day. There's no shortcutting it. It also helps to not get a hangover. Yeah. Right? Yep. Less got, it's less there potassium sweet, in here too. Yeah. Yeah. Less processed stuff. Uh, we're very fortunate. We have both our own lime trees and yes. the neighbor's lime trees that just overflow. We're in SoCal, so it's we get we have limes yeah, everywhere. Over and over and over. So we always have access to almost unlimited and they have like no seeds and the smallest rind, they're so juicy. We lucked out. Anyways, so make your own lime juice. Yes. Um, also, a trick we found was spicy tequila, infused tequila. Serranos are our favorite. Well, they sell spice, like they sell like habanero or um, jalapeno tequila, yeah. but it's not ever as good. And it's expensive. Yeah. And we also find that serranos are a lot spicier, right? Without the grass bit. taste. Yeah, without the grass taste. And not too much, like habanero can kind of burn your throat. Yeah. So we, we decided to make our own. Yeah, we've experimented with adding a couple habaneros. Yeah. And you get kind of like a more complex burn. But for this, uh, cut it in half, mm -hmm. long wise. Yep. We'll Don't just... take the seeds out. Cut the stem off because that's kind of gross. Make sure you wash these first. I, I don't know if I said that. And you just pop them in one or two at a time. You take it every now and then, every day or two, right? Mm -hmm. You kind of just... Just invert it at least once a day for the first three days and it's ready. Just let it sit. And we, we uh, it's a good present, birthday present for anyone yeah. who likes spicy or tequila. Yeah. Um, we use Hornitos because it's like 20 bucks at Costco. Mm -hmm. um, and then for a mezcal, uh, no huge, great preference. We've tried several of them. They can be, we'll go down to TJ and they're like, what, 15 bucks a bottle, give or take? Yeah. Uh, all the way up to, I think, Mezcal Uno is available everywhere, even mm -hmm. BevMo. Um, and that's Trader usually Joe's. like 30, 35 bucks. Yeah, you can find it at Trader Joe's or... But while you're mixing, not a big deal. Yeah, we've been getting this at Trader Joe's. Uh, actually, that's some Trader Jose or something. Mm -hmm. Mezcal is pretty good. Yeah. It's just a smoky... Uh, um, I, I try guess to find the, one that's not so rubbery because yeah, mezcal kind of taste rubbery, some of them. Yeah, so. one time we bought three bottles. We blind taste tested them and... Yeah. We tried them by themselves. We tried them with lime juice, and they're all over the board. We blind taste tested ourselves. Anyways, so <clears throat> lime juice, tequila. Uh, yeah, infused or tequila, mm -hmm. mezcal, and then also simple syrup, which I used to buy, and it was very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, all you do, and we need some, so we're gonna make a little extra. Yes. Uh, one cup water. Yep. Always a one to one ratio of sugar and water. Sugar. The easiest recipe yes. even you could remember yes. so don't go out there and buy it if you have sugar in your house i mean just try to make it mm -hmm. less than five minutes so yep. you take this over medium heat and the whisk i think this will fit yep lightly. whisk it lightly keep stirring while i'll do a cutaway right now here we go ta-da clear it's ready Make sure you let it cool at room temperature before you put it in the fridge or any other container. All right, that's how the simple syrup's made. So we're gonna show you how this all comes together. Yes. Um, we've, ahead of time, made a bunch of lime juice. Um, we just keep an old Simply, something with a wide mouth. Uh, the lime juice is great for a day, good for a couple few days. After a week, it starts to lose its, its, its fresh flavor. Mm -hmm. So I'd recommend uh, make as big a batch as you need for tonight. And maybe the next night, uh, don't plan too far ahead though. All right, one part smoky mezcal, two parts tequila, two parts lime juice, mm -hmm. and one part simple syrup. We put it in here just because, whatever, it looks nice, it stays clean. Um, so we're gonna do that now. Make sure you get ice cubes in here. Um, that's gonna help uh, both, what is it? 
aerate, mix, mm -hmm. attack everything. Yep. Um, and it's gonna taste amazing. And again, with the parts, uh, this is two ounces. That's one part. Um, you can adjust the simple syrup if you like them sweeter. We're not huge fans of sweet. Um, some places add orange juice. It's, it's just too much for us. So I'll start from smallest to biggest. One. Pull sticky. Give this a shake. That's why I like this sealed container. There's two parts to that. Two parts tequila. If this is too spicy for you, you can do one part this, one part of plain tequila. Half the time I do that, especially when we're playing with the uh, habaneros in there. One part mezcal. Again, if you like it more mezcal -y, you can do a blend um, of this, this, this. You can do two more of this, one of that. Regardless, you're gonna want three parts tequilas. Uh, three parts not tequilas. Yeah. And again, there's no right or wrong way. That's how we're gonna do it. Um, we got everything in here. So I'm sitting there yapping. You wanna do the shaky shake part? It's important to shake it a lot. Yeah. All right. Just like John Taffer says, you do it with a smile. Huh? Yes. So Jack is gonna go with the. Uh, so for the rim of the glass, we're going to use tahini. To get a little extra spice. You get even. this at any of your grocery stores. We use um, chamoy. Which is a tamarind sauce. Tamarind like sauce, yeah. Or you could use lime juice or, yeah, to kind of just make it a little wet so that tahini can uh, stick to the glass. We usually chill our glasses before, but this is just for show. So right now she's rimming the glass. You dip it in chamois so it gets sticky, mm -hmm. and then that tahini sticks to it. And it, it adds tastes, a little bit more of that uh, spicy it's amazing. flavor. And chamois gives it a little sweetness without being too sweet. Um, I've tried simple syrup, it's too sweet. Mm -hmm. I've tried lime juice, it doesn't stick as well, but it does give it a little extra tartness. Um, and then before we pour in our delicious margarita, mm -hmm. um, these silicone yeah. uh, trays mm -hmm. you get on Ice Amazon, mm -hmm. three, four, Box. Just like the just pack. like the restaurants, yeah. Yeah, this is exactly what the restaurants use. Mm -hmm. uh, makes you feel fancy. Yeah, it makes you feel fancy. <laughs> Why not? And this is a nice, perfect serving for both of us. Mm -hmm. My favorite. Yeah. Went to church, went shopping, making some bread. Mm -hmm. um, we have paid. I think we're in Palm Springs a couple weeks ago. 15 bucks each, yep. easy, all day long. For 15 a, bucks each. For a serving, just this much, if not less. Yeah. So. And it was rainstorm. And it's so yeah. easy to make at home, so much more enjoyable. And yeah. 20 bucks, relax. 20 bucks, free limes, mm -hmm. sugar, you know sugar's almost And they've been a hit with everyone we've actually introduced these to, so. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, my mom loves spicy. Some people, again, uh, was it? We had everyone over for Thanksgiving yeah. last week. Um, people don't like spicy, just sub this out with uh, regular, just yeah, just normal tequila. Yeah, just normal tequila. You know, you use something decent, yeah. but cheers. 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 Cheers to you guys. Enjoy. It's delicious. <laughs> All right, and it's been about one hour. She should be going off any second. Alexa, stop. So we're going to check out this dough. It got humongo. Come check this out. Can you see that? If you can see it, you can see it. Let's plop this out. Oh, beautiful. Oh, the smell. With flat, open hands, squish the ball down softly, cut in half. Um, I usually go this way, squish it down, because then it's more low fish. You're gonna want to cut it in half long ways. Long ways? Long ways? Long ways. Long ways? Long ways. Pull it out like that. You see that, how I put it on the pan? 
So it's, you know, and kind of squish it out, form it as much as you can without messing with it too much. We, um, we're going to wait another, was it 30 minutes? I think it's 30 minutes, right? Yeah. Um, cover and let rise for 30 minutes. Uh, so we'll do that now. And that's, that's it. There's nothing real hard about that. Um, should we put it back on the toaster oven just to let it proof again? All right, so I'm going to do that, cover it again, give it some privacy. See you in 30 minutes. Should be about time. Uh, let's preheat our oven. 400 degrees. Make sure everything's out of your oven. Okay, 400. All right. Let's check out our bread. Oh, there's Alexa, stop. Keeps beating our toaster timer. Ready? I think they fluffed up a little bit. They're a little uneven. You can play with them. I try not to. Um, let's go ahead and coat them with oil first. I will get a little ramekin. It's a fun word to say. You can top them with different things. You can do an egg wash if you want a little crustier. Uh, I like a nice softer olive oil. So we're going to do that first. Do we cut it first or after? After I think, right? After. Um, I have this cool little silicone brush. It's neat. Kind of squish it around in there and just paint it. Make sure you get every bit of it wet and glistening with olive oil. Don't be shy with it. Don't pour directly on the loaves. Um, you get all the little bits. All the sides, try not to dribble too much on the pan or parchment itself. I don't know if I mentioned I put a parchment sheet down first. I love the pre-cut squares. They're so nice because they don't curl up. They're not that much more expensive. You get from Walmart. I think I'm on Amazon subscribe and save. So, Anyways, we'll get every little bit of this. Same with this. Um, if you want that egg wash, just take one egg. Um, kind of whip it. Mix it up. Scramble it, I guess, with a fork or something. And then just do the same thing. It'll be a little slimy, a little boogery. But it is nice if you like that crust. Uh, like if you go, we have Vons out here in SoCal, uh, Safeway, Wegmans, where, you know, wherever your grocery store, if you buy those loaves at the checkout, these would be a buck. Now they're closer to two bucks. They'll, they'll egg wash on that. It gives you that chewy um, outside. This is a much fresher bread. Um, it does last for about five days. A week's pushing it, you'll start to feel a little mold on there. Um, so have it so you don't use a bunch of preservatives, um, but the taste is, is worth it, I think. And I don't think it usually lasts that long either, so. Uh, last, um, or do we season it first? Yeah. All right, let's do that. Um, I'm gonna add a little garlic. I love my garlic on there. You can use some of that dried basil too, huh? Mm -hmm. Or Italian seasoning? Mm -hmm. Again, evenly coat it. Um, I love a little salt on there. Um, we use the kosher salt. If you got it, cool. It's a good little shake. If you don't like salt, don't want it, you don't need it. Um, and again, I'm going to use a little, and it, it does make it smell good. I don't know if you can really taste the difference. And again, it's just a topping. But, um, if I'm in time seasoning, I'm just going to use a little, I found this dried basil at Costco. So. And again, it looks beautiful and you're going to, you will smell it when it toasts up. Um, that oven's almost set. We're going to put that in there for 20 minutes. First, I'll show you um, a really important step. Make sure it looks all the way pretty first. This makes good garlic bread. You can make sandwiches. And we put these in loaf pans, huh? Mm -hmm. So it's a little easier to slice. You can cut these up even more if you want. Um, you can add flavors, colors into it. Just be careful. Some colors, dyes, or garlic will kill the yeast. So be careful with that. I've done that before. Um, I tried to make a Valentine's Day loaf. I put lots of red dye. They killed the yeast, I guess. I don't know. It died. Um, last step, we want, uh, this will expand. 
this outside is going to have, you know, it's the crust, so it's going to be tight, so it'll blow out or look ugly. So what we do is have about four or five-ish kind of cuts across. You can make them whatever angle you want, and then that'll give it kind of places to expand. So you do your seasoning first, um, and then we just slice it. And that'll kind of let that steam out so it doesn't just explode or blow out the side because it'll look ugly. And these aren't the most beautiful loaves. They'll look even more beautifully beautiful after we cook them. Um, I'm just going to wait for that to preheat and we'll throw those in there. And then 20 minutes, we're going to have some amazing loaves. The oven's already preheated, so we're going to end up putting these into the oven. Make sure that the breads are in the middle shelf, that way it doesn't burn. And that's it. We're going to leave it to bake for about 20 minutes. What are we making while we wait? We are making a second round of margarita. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you caught me a little off guard because we already finished our first round. So yeah. we are doing a second round. Um, yeah, enjoy we'll... with the finished bread. Yeah, why wait, right? Why wait? Yeah. So, should be done in about 15 minutes, and we'll be ready for our third. <laughs> Just kidding. Let's see the money shot, love. Ready? Yeah. Let's see. Ooh. So nice. Look, you can tell she shook it good. Mm -hmm. It's nice and mm -hmm. that fizzy. Mm. Look at that. Beautiful. Mm. See, they don't show you this on all the Food Network cooking shows, huh? Cheers. <laughs> all right, and it's time. Alexa, stop. Right. Jack is going to do the honors. Oh, my oh, gosh, you guys. My look gosh. at that. If we could have, like, smell vision. Oh, yeah, the whole house smells great. It's, so there's so good. many wonderful parts. Oh, look at that. Don't burn yourself up. It's okay. No. No. <laughs> Well, you just hot potato it. Or, yeah, you can put your little gloves on. Sorry. You can sound backwards. That's okay. Whatever. You're good. So take them off the pan so they stop cooking. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. It looks so pretty there. Yeah. Why don't you flip it upside down so we can hear? Oh, yeah. So see, that's what you want right there. If it's any browner than that, it's gonna not taste wonderful. So if you do the egg wash, the top is going to be a little browner because it gets that, that uh, I don't know, there's probably fancy words. Alton Brown would know. <laughs> um, but these, this will be the best bread you have. Um, it's good, right? Very good. Oh, we got the, it's our favorite. It's Christmas time, so that's why we're decorated if you see that in the background. Anyways, uh, we're going to cut this open a little bit. Um, the hardest part of this whole recipe is waiting 20 minutes or so. About 20 minutes, just to kind of let it sit. Yeah. Because if you try to cut it now, it'll just... It's going to squish. Yeah. Yeah. So let it cool. Um, you could even... I'm going to reach over here as I'm... Like, have it cool as fast as you can, because you're going to want to eat this so fast. And again, you can cut this in half and make a garlic bread out of it. Just smother it in butter and garlic. Um, you can slice it. Mm-hmm. You make um, sandwiches? Yeah. I sometimes do that. Mm-hmm. Shut it across, uh, cut it across and make sandwiches. Or just have it as a side for your whatever dish that you're making, mm -hmm. a salad or just anything with the top. Anything. I mean, it's we, we've used it for all sorts of stuff. And again, you can add anything to that, top it differently. Um, and again, we'll, we'll see you in, in 20 minutes while it's ready. We have waited patiently and it's time to cut our bread and try it. Yes. Hopefully you guys are in the same boat. I'm so excited. Rob's not, but that's okay. Do you want me to cut it or you want to cut it? You can cut it. All right. Which one are we going to do first? Do the less cooked one? Okay. We're going to take the less cooked one because well, the more cooked one is less cooked. Not less cooked, just less bread. Well, yeah, just less bread. Less bread. Oh my God. Oh my, it just right up. Oh, I'm using okay. a bread knife. Uh, that way it kind of seesaws through. Mm -hmm. It's cooled off for about 20, 30 minutes almost. Look how pretty though. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it tears right through. Mm -hmm. oh, this is like good knife, huh? Right. You can cut it as thin or as thick as you want. Okay. You want a butter piece? Nice. <sighs> smell that. I wish you could smell that. Well done. 
They, they saw it. They said it's good. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh my god. It's amazing. A little butter. I prefer Kerrygold. It doesn't matter though. It's Kerrygold. Is it Kerrygold? That's my babe. She knows me. Mm -hmm. Oh. Is it delicious? It's really good. Sorry, we're over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want to see the rest, um, we still got pizza dough we got to show them. Maybe we can show them how to do garlic knots with that dough too. Mm -hmm. Subscribe, please, um, and like us. And comment. If you try it, um, that's what yeah. keeps us going. Let we're us not, know. Yeah. As of the time of this filming, we're not monetized. We got that taken away when my subscribers dipped down. But we do it for the comments. We love to hear what you guys say. And I mean, the house smells amazing. This is delicious. Um, for storage, you can either put it in a paper bag or saran wrap. I do saran wrap. Yeah, saran wrap, it will kind of fog, so make sure it's all the way dry. Mm -hmm. It'll kind of steam inside and make it kind of weird. Um, the salt won't look so pretty after it steams itself and it kind of gets you. Yeah, just let it kind of cool down, I guess, fully. Yeah. So even after 20, 30 minutes, it's still warm inside, but it didn't, you saw, I mean, it cuts so nice. It's it's the perfect density. Um, it's, it's, it's rad, so. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Babe, how cute are you? Choking. Because <laughs> I'm breading. I'm buttering. Isn't that what Beaver said? She bakes her own bread? Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs>